Second Chronicles, chapter 7, if you will. We want to look at one verse. Then we're going to use a lot of verses in a little bit. If you would, this morning, pray much. Uh, as I said, Brother Tony's boy uh, is very, very sick. And the church is very very disturbed as it would be when one of your own and loved ones and uh, one of my grandsons is uh, preaching there this morning. So remember then, uh, if you will. Uh, I'm glad to see each one of you this morning. Uh, you all mean something to us. It's good to see uh, well, I come from a family of seven kids. Uh, five of them have already left uh, into eternity. And uh, I'm the youngest of seven. Uh, my sister, the first one to leave this world and go to heaven 
was my sister Ethel. Back in 1982, I believe it was, time uh, slips away. But uh, this morning, I'm thrilled to have her granddaughter and husband with us this morning. Amen. I appreciate them. I've not seen them since we preached her grandfather's funeral. But we're glad they're here. We're glad each one of you are here this morning. And uh, one thing about salvation, one thing about being saved, you're born into a new family, the family of God. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. And if you're not saved, my prayer is this morning you would come to know Christ. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. America, America 2021. As we gather here this morning, I just want to give you a few thoughts, things that's popped in my mind, and then we'll look into a number of scriptures along with it. But I would say to you this morning, America was not built by the highly educated. America was not built by the rich. America was not built by the well-known. America, my friend, was built by common, simple people. People like you and I. America was established not to create wealth, but to discover and maintain liberty among men. It was General Omar Bradley who said, America today is running on the momentum of a godly ancestry, and when that momentum runs down, God help America. Close to where we are today. Oh, Bradley also said, we have grasped the mystery of the atom, and we have rejected the Sermon on the Mount. He said the world has achieved brilliance without conscience, and ours is a world of nuclear giants and ethical infants. So true. It cannot be emphasized. Patrick Henry said, it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians, not on religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. So true. This morning, we have many things in America that we could talk about, but my friend, we just need to remember some things. You know, it's not what we don't know that gets us in trouble. It's what we know and we forgot and we don't obey. I believe there's five things that have been said or that were said that caused the Roman Empire to decline. Five things that caused that great empire to fall. And they sound so familiar to what we have in this hour. First of all, it was a rapid increase of divorce, the undermining of the dignity and the sanctity of the home, which is the basis of human society. Number one, we have these on every hand today. 
Number two, it was the higher and higher taxes and the spending of public monies for free bread for the people. Pretty close home, right? Number three, the mad craze for pleasure with sports becoming more exciting and more brutal. Number four, the building of gigantic armaments when the real enemy was within, the decadence of the people. Number five, the decay of a religion, faith fading to the mere form and losing touch with life and becoming incapable to warn and guide the people. I believe if these five things cause the decline and the fall of the Roman Empire, can America's fall be far behind? America, my friend, is not the nation she once was, but I want to tell you this morning, she's still the greatest nation in the face of this world. And I thank God for America. But today, the America we know, she has become a learned nation. She has become an educated nation. Today, they say, or a few years ago when I got this statistic, they said that there are some 5,300 in colleges and universities in the United States, everything from beauty schools to Harvard. And I believe today that number has risen much. Today, America has not only become a learned nation, America has become a powerful nation. In fact, America has the greatest armor, the greatest weapons in order to defend us, and I thank the Lord that she has. I thank God for this. But I say third today that America has become so educated and so smart that we have become a foolish nation and a jeopardized nation. Preacher, what do you mean a foolish nation? Psalm 14, 1 says, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God, and they are corrupt, and they have done abominable works. Psalm 53, 1 says, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. Have you been listening lately? <laughs> every one of these things, every one of these we're seeing. And while America has much learning and education, I believe she has less common sense than she's ever had before. Common sense, common sense, common people. You realize our nation was built by these people. They didn't have all the blueprints. They didn't have all the uh, stores to buy the lumber and all. And I'm thankful they didn't have the price on two befores then that they have today. Can you imagine a two before costing $8 a piece? I mean, folks, We've went a long ways. But I want to say to you this morning, we don't need more in America. We need to return to the simple things, to the basic things. Now, I believe what America really needs is to know what we learned, not in college, but in kindergarten. How many of y'all went to kindergarten? few of you? Now, somebody's been so honest enough. Now, if you don't raise your hand, that's telling me you're as old as I am. 
because when I, well, they didn't have, they, they didn't have kindergarten. I mean, back in the early times of my life. But some things we learned in kindergarten. Number one was to share, share everything. Two, to play fair. Play fair. Three, don't hit people. Number four, put things back where you found them. Number five, clean up your own mess. Number six, don't take things that aren't yours. Amen. Number seven or whatever it is, <laughs> I told you I didn't go to kindergarten, uh, say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Then wash your hands before you eat. Hmm. The next was flush the commodes. <laughs> now, you know that's one of the newer ones. But like I said, there wasn't no kindergarten back then, and there wasn't no commodes back then. Uh, another they learned was that warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. They learn to live a balanced life, learn some, think some, draw some, paint some, sing some, and play some, and work some every day. And then take a nap every afternoon. When you go out in the world, watch out for the traffic, hold hands, and stick together. And remember the little seed in the styrofoam cup. You'd plant that seed. The roots would go down. The plants would go up. And nobody really knew how. And nobody really knew why. But you know, we're all like that. And then they learned that goldfish and hamsters and white mice and even the little seed in the styrofoam cup, they all die. The Bible says, my friend, that that's where we're all heading for. We all will. Early taught the Word of God, 633 Matthew. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Friends, today... We need to go back to the simple things, to the simplicity, if you will. You see, it's, well, I, I, I believe there's some things that we all need to know about God. First of all, we need to know that God is creator of all. You know, the higher the universities get us, the more they tell us there is no God. But folks, the truth is, God is, God was, and God always will be. And that God, he loves all mankind. He loves the souls of every man. He loves you. He loves you, my friend. And to realize that that God the God who is real, the God who has always been, the God who always will be, and that God is only one prayer away. <laughs> one prayer away. And that God will save whosoever shall call upon his name. This morning for a little bit, think with me. You see, there's some things that we need to know. 
There's some things we need to know in order to be saved. The things that the unsaved person needs to know, they need to know in order to be saved. First of all is that, you see, a person must know that he is a lost sinner. My Bible says in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no not one. Revelation 2014 and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. John 336, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Romans 1.18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And Ezekiel 18, 4 says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Folks, there are none that are not sinners. Man has not got better. Man is still a sinner keep that in mind remember that a sinner an unsaved person they must know that cannot save themselves Titus 3 5 not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Romans 3.20, Therefore by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified. Ephesians 2.8, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see, a person cannot be saved. They can't work enough. They don't have enough. They cannot be saved of themselves. In fact, the Bible says in John 14, 6, Jesus is speaking and he said, I am the truth and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. 1 Timothy 2, 5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Acts chapter 4, verse number 12, Neither is there salvation in, in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. First John 1, 7, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanseth us from all sin. John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. We can only be saved through the finished works of Jesus Christ at Calvary, through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. We can know that, and we must know that, but we must realize it's by faith. Salvation is by faith in him. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 18, he that believeth on him, that's Jesus, is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. John 1, 12, But as many as received him, Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For if the heart man believeth on the righteousness. My friend, this morning we need to realize if we will put our faith in what Jesus did, you see, Jesus paid for your sin. He paid for your sin. He paid for your, he paid for my sin. And my friend, if we will believe that, if we'll put our faith in him, he will save us. What do you mean put your faith in him? The Bible says, trust in the Lord. Sirs, what must we do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It's by faith and faith alone in Jesus. You're here this morning. You're listening on the airwaves. I plead with you. If you've listened, you know these things now. But my friend, you can't be saved by just knowing them. You must receive Christ as your own personal Savior. I ask you, would you do it today? Would you do it today? You say, preacher, I will tomorrow. My Bible says in Proverbs 27.1, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what another day may bring forth. Second Corinthians, today is the day of salvation. Unsaved friend, if you want to have freedom, thank God for the freedom we have in America. But if you want to have real freedom, you must receive Jesus Christ as your own Lord and Savior. And then I would go one step farther and say to you, to each of us who are saved, there's some things we need to know so that we can enjoy being saved. I believe one of the hard things in our world today is that Christians, those who know Christ, they have no joy and the unsaved world looks at Christianity. It looks like they've said that Christians look like they've been weaned on dill pickle juice. <clears throat> Christians that seem to have no joy. But remember this, we can enjoy it. I'm glad I'm going to heaven. Not because of me, but because of him. But, oh, my friend, I'm glad that I can join. The Bible says in order to do this, in Acts 2, 42, it says, And they continued fastly, continually, steady in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking bread and in prayers. Ephesians 5, 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Colossians 3, 16, let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Child of God, you're saved. We don't need the things of the world. Be careful 
the music you listen to, be careful what you watch, and all of these we need to enjoy, and we need to rejoice in this book right here, in the things that God has given us. And what the Bible tells us, we need to abstain from fleshly lust. Over in the book, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11, it says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Romans 8, 13, 4, If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye live through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. You're saved? We need not to hold on to the things of the world, but come out from among them. Bible says we need to pray, child of God. Ephesians, no. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. It says pray without ceasing. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Isaiah 1, 18, he says, Come now and let us reason together. Oh, my friend, we need to pray. You see, when we pray, that's when we're talking to God. But we need to be in the Word of God. We need to take the Word of God. First Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 22. Uh, no, First Peter 2, 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. The book of 2 Peter 3, 18, but grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Child of God, we need to pray. We need to study the word of God. And we need to be faithful to the house of God. Now, 1 Corinthians 16, 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Then he said in verse 16, or verse 2, Upon the first day, that's Sunday, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. He says, Be faithful to the house of God. The book says in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. We need to be faithful to the Word of God. If we're going to enjoy our, round, our uh, ride our, uh, on the way to heaven, then we need to be obedient. And he said to the believers, to his church, he said, preach the gospel. In Matthew 6, Mark 16, 15, he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Matthew 28, 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse 19 said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. If we're going to enjoy our trip, our journey to heaven, we're going to have to be obedient to the Lord. And it was the Lord that said as believers, we need to love our families. Love your family. Ephesians 5, 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 18. 
Wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands as fit in the Lord. In verse 19, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Ephesians 6, 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother. 1 Timothy 5, 8, but if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and he is worse than an infidel. If we're going to enjoy going to heaven on the way, oh, folks, we're going to have to love not only our family at home, but our church family, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and even those beyond. And the Bible says as Christians, we need to do good. If he, in Galatians chapter 6, and verse number 10 says, As we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Child of God, Christian, you that are saved, are you prepared to do the good? You see, one of the problems we got in America today, we don't see much being good to each other. We've left it all. We've left it all. And the sad part is, Christians, I don't care how bad the world gets, and I don't care what they do. God has commanded that you and I do good. No matter what they do to you, he says we're to do good. We're saved. We're saved. What did he save us for? We've been saved unto good works. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10 says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, unto good works. Christian, are you prepared to do good? <laughs> mm. He said, don't be only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. If you're here today unsaved, you've heard the word. You've heard the word. Will you do them? You know, there are untold number of people in hell who knew how to be saved. They knew how. But it's not enough to know how. You must personally accept Christ as your Savior. Will you do that? You say, preacher, I'm not going to. I don't believe. I don't believe what you're saying. Well, if you've paid any attention, then listen, I haven't told you anything that I believe. What I've given you, every one of them, right here from the Word of God. And my friend, if you don't accept Christ as your Savior, you will spend an eternity in hell. You say, preach, I don't like that. My friend, I don't like that either. And God doesn't like that. And that's why he sent Jesus to make a way that you can go to heaven. Would you trust him today? And Christian friend, you that are saved, are you going to travel on to heaven in misery or with joy in your heart? It all depends on whether you do, you obey what the Word of God says, if you obey the Word from your heart. And if you're not a joyful child of God, you can't blame anyone but yourself for what you do is your choice, is your choice. Americans, our problem today, 
Our problems are not God's fault. Our problems are not the unsaved people's fault. The problem is the believer's fault for not simply obeying the word of God. I say for our sake, for our children's sake, for America's sake, for the world's sake, for God's sake, let's do what he's told us to do. America, to be blessed again. We don't need more and more education. We don't need to travel farther and farther to those planets in space. That's not our need. We simply need to go back to what we learned in kindergarten and do and do. put in practice what we've learned. We need to come to God. We need to love him. And we need to obey him. Child of God, child of God, the Bible has taught us. The verse I read in the very beginning, if my people, Christians, if my people, what you called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Turn from the wicked ways, then shall they hear from heaven. I thank God for America. I thank God for the freedoms we have. In fact, I believe the Lord's coming back soon. I hope he comes back soon. But he may not be back for a while. But what you and I do will determine what our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, what they will go through. What will you and I do today? Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. The pianist is coming. If you be here this morning and you're not saved, I plead with you. I beg of you. Trust the Lord. God loved you. Jesus loved you. Jesus paid your sin debt. Would you this morning believe that he died for your sin, was buried, and rose again. Would you believe it? Would you trust him? Would you trust him today and be saved? Christians, let's enjoy the trip. Let others see the joy we have in Christ that they might want to walk along with us. Whatever your need is this morning, would you come to the Lord? America, America's future is depending on what? Not only here in Bible Baptist Church, but in churches across our land today. America's hope is here. Will you do your part? As we stand, the pianist is playing.